Hey guys, so um, behind us we have a beautiful painting by Catherine Machin. Uh, if you guys know her, she's pretty fantastic. She's an amazing cosmic artist and we're so happy to finally have this, this black, black hole. hole in our so house. Cool. So, not just Gilbert. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, the goal today is going to capture our first image with our new mount, the 10 micron mount, which you've seen uh, a couple of weeks ago. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Yes, the target that we're going to be capturing with our first light is going to be NGC 6820. And this was discovered in 1864, and it's a beautiful emission nebula. And it's actually in the constellation of Vulpecula, which is 6,000 light years away. Very crazy. And uh, Vulpecula, if you don't know, is actually home to the famous Dumbbell Nebula, which we are familiar with, Messier 27, as well as a bunch of other NGC targets. Yeah, so this target, so NGC 6820, we wanted to capture it because our friend and patron, uh, Gorge, uh, I hope this is how you George. say it. George? It's George, but it's like the uh, European, it's like, I think it's Gorge. Sorry if it's wrong. <laughs> George Gorge? I want to uh, say George. Yeah, who sent us a picture of his attempt and it was pretty cool. So I was like, hey, this target is rarely seen. Like, I have never... I want to do that. I've Maybe I've never, I think I've rarely seen this target. So... I was like, you know what, let's just pick this one as our uh, target for this time. And uh, we were inspired by uh, George Gorge. <laughs> All right, so uh, tonight we will capture it with a new mount. Let's do it. So here is tonight's setup. So we have the SVX 130 with uh, the NUC and the Pegasus Astrobox with the QHY 600M and uh, that's pretty much it so um, as you can see there is just two cables going down so the, this mount sadly does not have any through the mount cabling all the other cables are um, in this sleeve here so the power cable and the USB cable for the camera and they go straight here to the Pegasus box with the mini PC uh, we have bought a, an attachment for the dovetail here, so it's on the way. But in the meantime, I'm going to have my associate here, uh, Dahlia. Associate? I mean, I thought we were closer <laughs> than that. I'll have Dahlia hold the Pole Master steadily on mount, and without moving it, I'm going to uh, try to follow a line. I have zero faith in myself. Since making this video, we received the Pole Master adapter, which attaches to the dovetail like this. Our alignment will likely not be excellent tonight, so we don't expect awesome guiding, but it's okay. Thank you very much, my love. Uh, can we zoom Can I eat dinner? dinner? <laughs> we know you can polar align the mount with the hand controller, but I was never successful when trying this with other mounts, so I didn't want to waste too much time here. So we're doing currently our HA03S2 for our side. We might just do one one night on it, uh, just because honestly this mount is pretty heavy, so it's not like uh, the Sailor Region uh, pick we took like I think 40 hours of it. Right. Uh, we were just carrying the, the Atlas mount, the whole setup outside uh, every single night. This one you have to, you know, every Everything time. Everything has to be unpacked and put away. Yeah, because it's so heavy and so yeah. And we don't want to leave it outside during the day because it's so hot out here. And nope, it's just gonna fry everything. Let's not take any risk. And so, yeah, so we'll just take 10 minute exposures, uh, HA03 and S2, and we'll see how it goes for this target. So, let the first ever 10 micron frame appear! And, hmm. Thanks, plane. Thanks, plane. Great. The night went well, and the guiding was surprisingly good at 0.6, despite the MyGyver style polar alignment we did. Clouds rolled in, so we sadly had to delete all the S2 data in the morning. Luckily, we had a second clear night the next day, which we used to reshoot all of the sulfur data. And once that was done, we switched to the bubble nebula for a future project. There were some spikes in deck, but that was probably because of the polar alignment.
Here you can see what the single frame from each channel looks like from the city. Each is 10 minutes long. I woke up at 5 a.m. to pack before the sun rose because it gets super hot here very early in summer. All right, so it's the morning now. Uh, I woke up at 5 a.m. to uh, pack up because it was very, very hot already. Uh, as soon as the sun goes up here during this month, it gets super, super hot. So um, what I'm going to do now is, since the camera was not able to go under minus two, I set the temperature at zero degrees. So usually I do minus 15 degrees, but for the summer month, I'm going to do um, zero degrees. So I need to build a new dark library so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, do this right now. I have the jackery battery here, so I'm going to uh, power up the mini PC and the camera. And then I'm going to take some darks while the cover is on. And I will also uh, transfer the files using... Uh, so what I do to transfer the files on the mini PC, I used to use the Dropbox online, but now I just use a mini SD card uh, that goes in here and I just uh, use that instead. So I probably should buy a, a small uh, hard drive or something, but for now this will do. And uh, yeah, I will also have to take some flats. I forgot to take flats last night. So I'm gonna try taking some flats here using a light panel uh, and we'll see if that's successful. Processing this nebula was fairly easy. I decided to combine the channels as SHO, like we do for most of our narrowband work. SHO combination is what the Hubble Space Telescope uses when imaging emission nebulae. Sulfur is linked to red, hydrogen to green, and oxygen to blue. And here's what the final image looks like. What do you think of these colors? you can see the open cluster NGC 6823 close to the core of the nebula, to the left of that massive pillar of gas. All right guys, so here is NGC 6820 uh, in narrowband for about 5.5 hours. Exciting, right? Pretty good, I mean, it's a very short exposure time, so it's pretty impressive actually. Yeah. And we hope that you guys enjoyed this video as always. And if you're watching this the day that it gets uploaded, that means that Antoine is on his way to France to be with his family again. Yeah, I'm kind of salty because, I mean, I love going there. Like I go there every two or three years, but just because we got this mount like a few weeks ago, I just want to stay longer and just use the mount. Uh, it's been like cloudy for like weeks now. Yeah. And I really want to use the mount more, but um, no I'm, I'm gone already. So by if this is online that I'm already gone. So I'll be back in about two months and I can't wait to use this mount again. Which is really, really sad because I don't want to see you go, but I mean, I will survive. And that might also mean that I will be making videos alone, which is going to be exciting. Please don't fault me for not having good focusing and blah, blah, blah. As much as I'm around technology, I'm not the best filmmaker, that's Twan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next time and clear hey skies. Guys. I'm already gone, babe. <laughs> I'm already gone. I I'm gone. I'm already gone. <laughs> if it's easy for you, then just use the English version, which is George. If you really want to go into the German version, then it's Georg. But I know this is not very easy to speak, so you can choose either way which you want. Okay, see you. Bye.